Hey y'all, I'm back at it here today. Um, trying to, I uh, got one little, one broken airline up here on the shifter for the uh, uh, overdrive. It's broken up there, traces all the way back down, and then it's broken back down here in the transmission too. So I gotta replace that airline because it's leaking, like it, that one leaks enough to draw this whole system down. So uh, I'm gonna work on changing that today and hopefully we can maybe take this thing for a drive. I rolled it into the shop last night under its own power, but it, uh, but it's stuck in high range. So I got to see if I can get enough air into it to be able to work the, uh, actuators to, uh, shift the range out on it. So we're going to work on that a little bit and try to get this thing, uh, see if we can take it for a spin tonight. Tires are going to limit us a little bit, but we'll see what we can do. So after getting this thing started the other day, I let it sit overnight in the shop and it was warm in the shop. And I went to crank it up again and wouldn't start and it lost prime and wasn't sucking fuel. So I had to eat through the hell out of it again to get it to start. Ran great after I started it, um, but uh, it decided to, you know, I shut it down again, went back to try to start it here again today, and it doesn't want to start again. So I'm wondering. I'm assuming I got air in the system. Um, so I'm kind of trying to figure out where I would have gotten air. And I'm kind of wondering when I replaced that fuel filter if I might have screwed up the little uh, gasket on the inside of the, the fuel filter on it. So I'm going to check that and uh, maybe put some air in the tank and try to figure out, see if I got some other leaks somewhere else coming out of the fuel pump or anything like that. Um, smokes like a banshee when I'm trying to crank on it, but... It just won't take off, so we'll see what we can find out. Honkers coming back for the season. Noisy buggers. So my simple solution didn't seem to work, I guess. Um, but this thing's got, I'm not really familiar with it. Some of you guys might know what it is, but uh, it's got a fuel heater like a fuel system heater on it it looks like it's got like a radiator or some kind of muffler I don't know what's inside that I haven't even pulled it apart but it runs the fuel lines through there and it runs water lines heater lines come through there and everything so when the engine's running it's it's I'm assuming heating the fuel for cold weather stuff I'm assuming I don't know I could be wrong I've been wrong once before um, but I'm kind of wondering if that may, might not have something to do with what's going on here um, if anything, it's just kind of a pain in the ass just to to have it on. So I might try bypassing it, um, looking at the fittings and everything like that. It looks like I can actually just uh, I'll probably just connect it right there at that elbow, uh, depending what the the ends are there. Um, so I'll probably try bypassing that and see if I can maybe suck a little more fuel other than that. I'm not finding any spots where I'm seeing raw fuel come out or anything like that or anything that would indicate a fuel leak. Um, I'm losing all my light. I had to watch the kids after work today. I'm losing all my light so I don't have a chance to work on it. I could pull it into the shop again, I guess. But um, Yeah, um, but I mean every line on this truck is, is pretty old. Um, I might just... See about getting some new lines made for uh, just go straight from the tank, the outlet up to the, and just go straight to the fuel pump. That'd probably save me a lot of headaches and a lot of grief here coming up. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's there's gonna be a lot of lines. There's gonna be a lot of expensive lines on this truck that get re that end up getting replaced. So um, hopefully we can just get it running. The uh, splitter. The high low splitter on the uh, on the shifter here, right up there. this one here, old style split, old style splitter here. Um, that's leaking air to beat to beat hell. So um, I ordered up a new one of those. Hopefully that'll be coming in a few days. I should have probably just bought it locally. They're not too expensive actually, but um, that's leaking air, so I can't split it down into low range. I could probably pull the lines off and hit it with a little air just to click it down there if I needed to, but. Um, we'll see what happens when the new one comes. We'll throw that in quick and uh, see if we can get her down at a low range. I did take it down the driveway a little bit the other night. Um, 
thought it was running good, but I got to the end of the driveway and it just about died on me. So I didn't really want to get out on the road and get stuck out there and have to pull it home. So, um, but there's definitely some kind of air in the system and I'm just trying to figure out where it's coming in at. So there's the cab going down. You know, kind of anticlimactic. Um, so I gotta get the fuel system figured out. Then I'm gonna start attacking the air system. The air system's gonna be a real mother, I know that. Um, but uh, once we got that, um, I'd like, I, I need to find some tires for it. I need. I have a bunch of 22 fives for other trucks that I have, but I don't have any 24 fives. These take all 24 fives. I got on Craigslist this morning, and and I saw somebody who was uh, trying to sell a full set of six already polished Peterbilt aluminum 24.5 buds that were with the Peterbilt ovals in them and everything and he all, all he wanted was a hundred bucks a piece and I sent him a message at 6 30 this morning and they were already sold so if somebody got a good screaming deal on those I would have liked to have picked those up but I kind of want to stay with the circles um kind of keep the retro look on it and uh so I'll try to find four four more circles for the back there and we'll just keep steels on the inside not too swanky that I need eight aluminum wheels back there but hopefully for now unless I can find a screaming deal on tires I'll just try to find some tires that'll get me by until we get the thing painted and kind of want to get the frame blasted and everything before before I go to replacing all those lines because I'd like to blast the frame and paint them and uh, then just replace the lines afterwards because then I don't like painted lines I think they look kind of crappy so hopefully uh hopefully we can maybe get the frame blasted i got a buddy that does blasting and everything like that and get it blasted and painted and then i can start replacing all the parts on it that i need to and and that way they all they look fresh instead of big thick coat of black paint on it so okay well we'll uh, keep working on it here so okay so we I did a little more diagnosing here and found out I had a whole pile of water still in that uh, fuel tank there. So I ended up um, draining the bottom drain out of it and just keep kept uh, draining and plugging and draining and plugging and draining and plugging until I got uh, the water out of it. I'm going to try to get some dryers, uh, some little absorbing, those absorbing dryers in there and try to get the rest of that water out of there. Um, it's a shame because I put a bunch of fuel in there too. So. Um, I'm going to try to get that stuff absorbed out of there. But um, when I was running it the other day, um, I blew an airline. It's kind of got some airlines cobbled together. Got a stainless line coming out of the out of the air compressor down into this larger stainless line that ends up going down. It's this line here that goes down into the uh, uh, tank here, air tank. So I think I got enough length actually here. I'm going to try to... For now, just so I can start building some air pressure, I'm going to run this down through here, and I should be able to attach this line straight to the tanks and just bypass this broken part. So uh, I'm going to try to take care of that and um, see if we maybe take it for a little bit of a drive. So, for those of you that have ever grown up in the country, and I'm not horrible. I don't know what it's like throughout the rest of the United States, but in North Dakota we get frost boils. Pockets of crap dirt that's underneath the gravel that when the uh, frost comes in stays wet stays muddy and it just cripes you can sink a truck right out of nowhere or right down into the ground and they're bad for a couple weeks sometimes a month and then all of a sudden they go away and the ground's fine again for the rest of the year so it's one of the issues of living in the country I guess well, I got her up and running, and uh, still got a little leer lake down here in the shifter that's causing me some fits, and it's really not letting my air pressure go up to above about 90. But uh, I got my water temperature coming up, I got all my engine gauges working, everything's working up here. Um, I took it down the road about a half mile, so I'll show you guys, we'll take a little spin here and we'll show you guys how it goes. Just set you down here for a second. Probably gonna bounce around a little bit before I get going. I'm stuck in high range, so I can't. So I really gotta give her some juice to get going here. But once I get going, it shifts good and everything works. So. Bit of lube, I think, bouncing around. 
around and making a little chattering noise. I don't want to go too fast because those back tires are about ready to fall apart on me and fly apart down the road. So just taking her down the gravel road. And things actually rolling out pretty good. I think the next thing on the list is get this cab cleaned out. It's uh, beginning of flood season here in the Red River Valley. Um, they were saying we were going to have a top five flood this year, but I highly doubt it. I honestly think this is, it's, I don't think it's going to get much worse than this, to be honest with you. So, one thing about this truck is you really got to stomp on the gas. I don't know if that was normal in all the cab overs or not, but you really got to stomp on the foot feed to get the, uh, the throttle to work. And I don't know if that's just an adjustment that I can do or, or what, or something to do with the fact that it is a cab over. Other than going through the air system, getting that all up to snuff, getting some decent tires on it. I think we can, after that we can probably get her into town, get her sandblast, get the frame sandblasted and get that painted and maybe start thinking about what we're going to do with the cab. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know.